What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build this fun little dice roller app for Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this dice roller app so you can see we can roll the thing, we get different dice each time, we get the added up dice roll every time, and it's pretty fun. Now this looks kind of interesting, these are not actual images, these are Unicode things. So I'll show you how to do that. So we don't even need images to do this. So this will be super fast and easy. We can change the colors if we want and do all that stuff. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with almost 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got, and I'm calling this dice.py. So the first thing we need to do is create a dice list. So like I said, we're not going to be using images for our dice. We're going to be using Unicode characters. So there are basically just text things that are dice that you can use. So let's create a list of those. I'm going to call this my underscore dice. And like I said, it's going to be a Python list. And there's just, we need six of these. So let me just sort of slap a dash in here. So let's go two, three, four, five, six. And inside of here, the Unicode code for dice is U two six eight zero and in fact let me just copy this because it's going to make this a whole lot easier so two three four five six so it's u two six eight zero that's for the one dice and then this is one this is going to be two three four and five right so these are our dice now we're going to need to randomize this. So we need to import random. We've used random lots of times in these videos. So now let's create a frame. See, I want my dice to be right next to each other. So I'm going to stick them in a frame so it's easier to grid them out because I want to pack everything else on the screen. So I'm just going to call this my frame. And this is going to be a frame. We want to put it in root. And then let's go my underscore frame dot pack. And let me give this a pad Y of like 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so now let's create dice labels and put them into the frame. So I'm gonna call this dice underscore label one. And that's gonna be a label. We wanna put it in my underscore frame. We want the text to equal nothing yet. And let's give this a font of, let's make this really big because by default, these dice are really kind of hard to read. So I'm gonna give this a Helvetica and then like the font size, like a hundred or something, make it really big, right? So let's go dice underscore label one dot grid. And let's give this a row equals zero column equals zero. Let's give this a pad X of like five just to space it out a little bit from the other dice, the other die, I guess, uh, that we're about to create. So let's go ahead and create a second one. I'm going to call this dice label two. And this will be column one. Okay, so let's also create a button. And we can click this to roll the dice. So I'm just going to call this my button. And it's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal roll dice. And let's give this a command of roll underscore dice. So we need to create this roll dice function. We'll create that in a second. But for now, let's my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen too. Okay, so let's come up here and create this function. Let's say roll the dice. So let's define roll dice. And let's create a variable. I'm going to call this dice one or D one. And this is just going to be a random dot choice. And then what a choice of what? Well, something from our my dice list, right? So this will take everything in here, kind of randomize it, pick one out at random, and then assign it to this D1 variable. So let's say roll random dice. And now let's do the same thing for D2 because we have, you know, two dice here, right? So let's update labels. And remember, we called this dice label one and dice label two. So I could just go dice label one and dice label two dot config. And we want the text to now equal D1. All right. So I could just copy this and do that. So, OK, that looks pretty good. I think that's pretty much all we need just to roll the dice and put them up on the screen. So. Let's head back over to our terminal and run this guy. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, into commercial, let's run this guy, python dice.py. And when we do, 
We get this thing, nothing shows up on the screen yet because we haven't randomized it until we click the button, so we'll need to fix that. Let's go ahead and click this, and boom, we get a six and a three. We click it again, five and a three, three and a one. So, okay, so far so good. Now, what if we wanna do something with this? Like say right here, we've got a six and a five. How do we know it's a six and a five? We can look at it and we can see it, but our program doesn't know that this is a six and a five. And if we wanna maybe add these together, how could we do that if the program doesn't even know what they are? It's putting them on the screen, but it doesn't know that this thing is a six. It's a six dice, it knows that, but it doesn't know that that's a number six. So we need to play around with that. And also when we run this guy, you know, right here at the beginning, there's no dice on the screen. So maybe we wanna show some dice when the program loads. So we can do that real quick. We can just call our roll dice function when the program starts. So like down here, let's say you roll the dice and we can just call it like that. So now if we save this and run it, you can see right off the bat, boom, it, it shows an image there. So we don't have to click the button in order for it to do something. So now let's knock out these uh, numbers here. Let's figure out how we can determine, hey, that's a two, hey, that's a five, right? So pretty simple. I'm gonna create two more labels under each of these labels. And I don't know, let's just call this sub dice underscore label one, right? And this one will be sub underscore dice level two. So it's gonna be underneath our dice. So I'm just call it sub, I call it anything you want. I'm bad at naming things, right? So this is gonna be a label. We wanna put it in my underscore frame. We want the text to equal nothing to begin with. And let's go sub underscore dice label one dot grid. And here we want row equals zero and column equals zero. So let me just copy each of these, come down here paste it in again, but of course this is gonna be sub underscore dice label two, and this will be column one. Okay, so now we've got these labels, right? So let's now come up here in our roll dice function and let's determine, hey, what is each dice's actual number? So here we know what we're rolling, D1 and D2. That will return the Unicode character of the dice thing, but what do each of those things do? Let's say uh, determine dice number. So I'm gonna call a function called get underscore number. And we wanna pass in each of these things. So for instance, D1. And we need to output this to a variable that we can then access. So I'm gonna call this SD1 for sub dice one, <laughs> right? So that's horrible, but whatever. So let's do it again for SD2. Right, so D1, SD1, D2, SD2, ah, terrible names, I know. So then let's come down here and let's update our labels. Remember we called these sub dice label one and two. So here we can config these. So update sub labels. And this is gonna be dot config. And the text here is gonna be whatever this is returned, right? So we could just do it like this. Let me just copy this whole thing, paste it in. This will be label two, and this will be SD2. So, okay, that's great, but what is this thing, right? This get number, we haven't created that yet. So let's say get the dice number, and this is gonna define, and we need to pass in a variable because down here we're passing in, you know, whatever the dice thing is, right? So here we just need to do a big if statement. So let's say if this X, equals something, what? Well, this guy. So we know that this, we can return what? One, the number one, because this is the dice for one, right? So then we can go L if X equals what? That, then return two. So let me just copy this a few more times. So we've got three, four, five, and six. So let's come through here and return six, return five, return four, return three. This will be 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. So this U2685 is this U2685, right? So that's six. This is five, four, three, two, and one. So we're saying, hey, if we randomly select this, then the number to return is one. So this return one will return the number one 
back into this function and assign it to this variable, right? And then this variable we can output to our sub label, right? So, all right, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Python dice.py. And boy, these are showing up right in the middle. So there's something wrong there. And they both say five. So that's wrong. Five and two, six and one. Oh, that's three and six. But why are they there? We put the wrong grid thing. So down here, where we define these guys. So this should be, ah, yeah, row one. This should be row one. There we go. Okay. So now let's run this guy again. All right, so now we get four under the four and six under the six. So we go roll the dice again, two and four, six and four. And that seems to work, five and two. Now we can do stuff with this five and this two. So maybe we want to add them up and output that in a label that says, you know, what you actually rolled. So let's come down here and let's create totals label. And I'm going to call this total underscore label. I'm going to make this a label. I want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing so far. And let's go uh, font equals what? Say Helvetica and then like 24 something. We can give it a foreground color if we want. Let's make it say gray just to change it up a little bit. And let's go total underscore label dot pack. Give this a pad Y of like 40. Really push it down the screen a little bit. So now we've got this total label up here. When we roll the dice, remember we get SD1 and SD2. So down here, we can update total label. And let's just create a variable called total. And this is going to be SD1 plus SD2, which is this or this, which is getting returned here. So it's either one, two, three, four, five, or six. So we can just add those two together, slap them in a variable. Now we can total label dot config and make the text equal to total. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how that looks. Oh, that's not where I want that. So let's move this guy around. So we put this total label above the button. I probably want it below the button. And for the output here, instead of just the total, let's create an F string, right? So you rolled and then brackets, more brackets, Quotation marks, parentheses. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and run this guy. Okay, so you rolled three. Roll the dice again. You rolled seven. Cool. So this roll dice button, maybe we want to make it a little bigger. It's kind of awkward looking. These guys, we can change the color of them if we want. How can we do that? Well, let's do that. First, let's go to our button. And here, let's give this a font of Helvetica, size like 24 to make it bigger. And then for our dice labels, dice label one, we can do the same. We can give it a foreground color of, I don't know, blue, right? Maybe this one, we want to give a foreground color of red. I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and save this guy and run it one more time. <laughs> that is some ugly dice. So now our roll dice button is bigger <laughs> and we've got this horrible color. Oh, that's just terrible. So oh, maybe I'll change that back to like silver. I don't know. Whatever color you want really doesn't matter. That's a little too light for me. Maybe just change it back to black. Black is nice too. <laughs> ah, there we go. Looking much better. So just a goofy little app. We've done dice rolling apps in the past in this playlist, but this used a little bit of a twist, a little Unicode character. We, you know, mixed it up a little bit with some different functions that are slightly different. And it's just a fun little app to knock out and kind of interesting. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 on memberships. We pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from CodeV.com, and I'll see you in the next video.